Lizzo, I'm not sure you have any idea how long I've been waiting for this. Hey. But here we go. 73 questions. Oh, and one I... second. Huh? <laughs> Hands. Oh. <laughs> of course. Okay, cool. Certainly. What were you doing the moment I knocked on this door? Um, I was just eating my feelings. What would you say is making you feel positive these days? Um, music. What's a routine that you are adamant about keeping up? Hmm. Meditation. Hmm. Is there a habit that you're trying to give up? Hmm. Meditation. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I think TikTok is becoming a habit. Like, it's taken over my life. Hmm. Did you meditate today or do a TikTok today? Neither. Oh. I gotta do both. You gotta get on that. Come in. Thank you very much. Well, this is quite the beautiful and stunning home that you have here. Thank you. Would you call yourself an introvert or an extrovert? I'm an anti-social extrovert. What's one thing that you have to do whenever you go back home to Houston? Papados. Do you get to go back to Detroit much? Mm-mm. And I heard you're a huge Sailor Moon fan. And if you could be one of the Sailor Guardians, who would you be? Sailor Saturn. She, I mean, I love Sailor Saturn, I guess, but she's the goddess of like death and rebirth. So maybe I would just be like Sailor Venus, the goddess of love. Do you still write stories at 4 a.m. like you did in high school? Um, I write songs at 4 a.m. I need to write more stories. So we ever gonna see a sci-fi fantasy romance novel from you? Whoever got the biggest check. Okay. I'll give, I'll give you that book if you got the check. Deal. You want some tea? Yes, I'd love some tea, thank you. Um, what's an embarrassing moment that you can laugh about now? <laughs> high school. <laughs> I agree. That, make, that makes two of us on that one. Uh, Is there a book that you've read that positively shaped your life? Mmm. You want, uh, what kind you want? What I'll take this? whatever. Sorry, that's so insane. <laughs> no, I'm gonna think. give you the one I didn't put my nose that's on. That's fine, don't worry about it. Um, a book that changed my life. Yeah. A lot of books have changed my life. Um, the Bible. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> So what tea are we gonna be making here? What do, what do we have? Oh, for you, I'm giving you a herbal tea. For me, I'm getting a um, none of your business tea. <laughs> business tea. <laughs> Nacho tea tea. So Lizzo, on any given cozy afternoon, what would you say is your favorite kind of tea to enjoy? <sighs> the messiest. You want it? Yes, thank you. Let's try this herbal tea. Ooh, that tastes really good. It's cozy. Oh, but I forgot to say, bottoms up. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad joke. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. So, I wanted to congratulate you, Lizzo, on 10 million TikTok followers. Thank you. That's huge. I'm just trying to be like Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> fan favorite is one where you and Liza Koshy sing and dance to get the vote out. How did you guys come up with that? Um, I was just, well, we didn't come up with it. Um, I was just, it's like a spontaneous thing. I was in my studio and it was, you know, a day for, that people needed to know about voting. So I just made like the primary song in my studio. Liza, I guess, saw it and made the remix. And, you know, that's, the rest is her story. Well, I'm pretty sure that it had a pretty big impact on voter turnout. Why is this issue so important to you? Um, well, I mean, I'm realistic about voting. I know that's not the only thing we can do to bring change, but it's one of the most important things we can do to understand our power and to know our civic duty. Um, so this generation, we're so active, we're so political, mm. and we care. So, mm. you know, we need to exercise all of our rights, um, voting included. Right, now I gotta ask you, how are you going to vote in this election? Um, as quickly as possible and as soon as possible, I'm mailing it in. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that straight from Lizzo. Mm -hmm. A lot of people consider you an overnight success, but the truth is that you've been at this for a very, very long time. Yeah. How does your past play a role in all of this? Um, I mean, everyone's past plays a role in their present. For me, I feel like I just learned a work ethic 
from having to work so hard. I don't have expectations. You know, I don't expect a number one song. I don't expect Grammys. I just like want to make music. I want to tour. Right. And um, I still have that mentality. No matter how many awards I get, how much money I get, my mentality is like work hard, play hard, and do it because you love it. Right. Now, how did growing up in Houston mold your musical talents? I learned how to freestyle rap in Houston. And um, that is so important. That is like the most important thing. I used to listen to uh, Screwed Up Sundays and Lil Flip, and it, I'm, I'm the bitch I am today because of that. How did your religious upbringing shape who you are and who you are not? My religious upbringing led me to spirituality. And because I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, I fell in love with gospel music. And um, I don't know, just kind of singing, taking you to a higher place. I mean, yeah. you really do that in gospel, like literally. So I, I still do that on stage. Like every stage I'm on is church. Hmm. Well, you could totally see that in the energy of your music and in your stage presence. But another thing when you were growing up in your 20s, you had what you called a summer of metamorphosis. And uh, that was three months of silence. Is that right? A summer of silence. Right. So what caused that? Well, I mean, it wasn't on purpose. I, I was really sad and I was, um, I felt really alone. And I had made a major change in my life and I was embarrassed of it, dropping out of college and not pursuing flute. So I just shut down, really. I think people romanticized it after the fact. They were like, wow, you took a vow of silence. You were like a monk. I'm like, no. I'm like, I was depressed and sad. But I used it to, you know, create the person that I am today. Instead of letting that three months destroy mm -hmm. me, I am who I am today because of it. Yeah. And there was a time when you weren't silent during that summer, and that was when you were singing Beyonce on your hikes. Does she know about this? Does Beyonce know you're singing her? I ran away from a coyote singing Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> um, she does not know. She don't know. Wait, 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 what's the story with the coyote? I was hiking. Well, I wasn't even really hiking, but we lived in Aurora where it was like a lot of hills in Colorado. And in the neighborhood, there was, a, there was coyotes. And I remember I was just walking through the neighborhood and I saw this gray dog. And I was like, oh, that ain't a dog. Cause you know, they got something, he had a look in his eyes, you know? And I just kind of ran in the opposite direction to uh, Green Light by Beyonce. Okay, so you were singing Green Light by Beyonce. That was it? That was it. And she's seen you perform. Mm -hmm. She even gave you a birthday shout out. Have you met Beyonce yet? I've not met Beyonce. Lizzo, how are we gonna make this happen? If anyone can do it, it's Vogue. Lizzo, what's a creative risk you've taken that's paid off? Being myself. And what's a creative risk you've learned the most from? Being myself. That's very <laughs> fair. What would you say you're most proud of in your career? I'm most proud of my friends. Like the women in my life who have started this with me from the beginning, I'm proud of us and I'm proud of how far we've come and that we're still together. And we're winning awards together. Amazing. It's hot. Okay, hot. it is hot. Now really quick, the Mars Volta or at the drive-in? Mars Volta. Martin or Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Come on, Martin, Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince, Mar Martin's funnier, Fresh Prince means more. Living single or friends? Friends is living single. Okay, hang on, hold on, time out. What's this, I gotta stop you. It looks like the most comfortable chair I've ever seen. Right behind This you. is um, the love sack. I thought it was a Minnesotan thing, but I got one in LA. Oh my God, how do you ever leave that? <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I don't. <laughs> All right, Lizzo, this interview needs a little bit of a chord change. What would be your song to walk down the aisle to? What aisle are we talking about? He's talking about the aisle to get some chicken wings? <laughs> <laughs> you talk about the aisle down the private jet? I like Any to walk aisle. down the private jet aisle <laughs> uh, okay. to um, Shake That Laffy Taffy by D4L. Per perfect answer. Perfect. Is there a song that always brings you to tears? Yeah, there's a few songs that always bring me to tears. Gospel songs. Um, the Storm Is Over Now by uh, Kirk Franklin. Um, yeah, that one always makes me cry. Now, do you still want to dance your first dance to Cry Mob's Knuck If You Buck at your wedding? 
<laughs> yep. I, I found These are that all funny I found... because I I'm not getting married. <laughs> did I say that in the interview? Yes, you did. Was I was was I drunk? <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't I love Nuck a Few Book. I think it's the national anthem. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a big claim. Come on, lay down. I'm not Lizzo. <laughs> come on. This is an interview. Who are your celebrity crushes going up? Cele- <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to lay down. Um, celebrity crushes. Celebrity crushes when I was a kid or now? As a teen. You know the same. Everybody likes Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. I liked B2K. Okay. What about now? I don't. <laughs> these celebrity crushes now. Zero. Zip zero. Come on. All right, fine. Okay, really quick. Kiss, Mary, kill. Up to you. Harry Styles, Trevor Noah, Carl Anthony Towns. Um, it's kiss, Mary, kill. Or kiss, Mary, cuddle. Um, or cuddle. I sure. would cuddle kiss Carl Anthony Towns. I would marry Trevor Noah and I would cuddle Harry. Okay. Look at those awards, Lizzo. I got to see that. Come on. Let's take a look at your, your boards. There's a lot of things in there. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Now, when did you first know music was your calling? Or have you always known that it was your calling? Um, I was basically born to make music. I've mm-hmm. always known. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote and what it was called? The first song, I mean, can't remember like the first ever, but the first song that stands out to me that I took very seriously was in the fifth grade. And it was called Broken Households. Okay, so sh- let's let's show the audience what you're standing in front of now. What what are you most proud of? What's the most Soul Train Award? Yeah, I'm so proud of my Soul Train Award mm. for Album of the Year. This was so unexpected, and it was the first time I had ever won an award at an award show like this. So, mm. um. This was a very, very, very big deal. This changed my life. All right, can you show me something else? These are my NAACP Image Awards, Mm -hmm. which are incredible as well. And I got to go on stage and say a speech, and I was so nervous. And these are my Grammys. Um, Mm. There's the Grammys. These Grammys are interesting to me because this is an R&B, urban, and pop Grammy in the same year. So that's kind of weird. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm grateful that the that you know the Grammys understands that I'm multifaceted and complex. It's very, <laughs> it's very, very impressive. Now you've said your confidence as a front woman came from the first band you were in. Is it true you found them on Craigslist? This band? I did. I mean, you could say they found me on Craigslist because they were like, "We're looking for a singer to join our band," and I just answered the call. How do you squash nervous energy before performance? I mean, does Lizzo ever get nervous? Well, when I was in a rock band, I would get drunk. I would drink a lot of whiskey Mm. and Lone Star beer and just go crazy. But I learned that that is not sustainable. So now I kind of just imagine the audience naked. And that works. It works. Okay. Now, one of your known skills is that you twerk and play the flute simultaneously. That cannot be easy. What are your breathing exercises that you do for that? I can't tell you. It's a sacred black girl secret. If I tell you, then everyone will do it. Lizzo, can you show me a hidden talent? What? I made the small with my mind. What is that? What is that little thing? It's my Valentino bag. Oh. It has everything in it. My okay. chapstick, my cell phone, mm-hmm. a whole 24 slice box of pizza. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's very important to me. How do you even properly hold that little bag? All right. Let go. me see. Oh. Let me see you hold it. Let me try holding it. And, uh, ah, it didn't expect- You like that? Yeah. It's heavy, isn't I didn't it? I expect it to be so heavy. Let me, let me, oh. <laughs> Can you show me a pose? Can you pose for me? <laughs> okay. Now, you once contemplated quitting music, but your producer had some wise words for you. Can you tell me what your producer said? You know, he said something very cliche, but things aren't cliche without a reason if they weren't true. He said, this is the moment where it's darkest before it's dawn. So now every time I have a moment of sadness or darkness, I remember that I can only go up from here. That's right. Now you were summoned by Prince on Easter Sunday, 2013. Where were you when you got that call from Prince? I was with my best friend, Sophia Aris. Can you describe the feeling walking into Paisley Park? I felt like I was walking into magic. Mm. 
What encouraging words would you give to black girls who look up to you, who are nerds and maybe insecure about it? <sighs> I think black girl nerds are the coolest people on the planet. And we really are. We rule the world. We rule culture. We set the trends. We are truly it. Like, shout out to all my black girl nerds. I think the world is finally starting to appreciate us. When that shout out is delivered and that shout out is received. And Lizzo, what on earth, what on earth is this? That's the same bag. I just made it big with my mind. <laughs> 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 okay, I hope we're heading to your closet because I want to ask if you could show me an article of clothing that makes you feel most powerful. Oh, come in my closet. How, how convenient. Now, how did you find out you made it on Obama's summer 2019 playlist? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. So, the article of clothing that makes me feel the most powerful is not he in here, but I love a good bra and panty set. The sexier, the better. Would you say that you have any fashion regrets? None. What's a trend that you're never gonna give up? High-waisted jeans. <laughs> Can you show me an example? Of, of high-waisted jeans? Yes, anything you've got. All of my jeans are high-waisted jeans. Okay. <laughs> Cause my waist is high. Everyone thinks, you know, I'm a big girl. My waist is up here, it ain't here. And what's a trend that you're never going to give into? Low-waisted jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I take it there's not an example of that here? Hell no. Uh, what's been your favorite red carpet look? Oh my god. Mm. <sighs> um, what do you think? We really do a good job doing everything. It's really hard to pick the highlights. The highlights. No, you know what? Whoa, whoa. Christopher John Rogers neon green dress that I wore to the GLAAD Awards on the carpet. You look stunning in that one. Thank you. Um, but I need to ask, denim or leather jacket? Denim. Do you have any denim in here? Show me some denim. Oh, wow. Hmm. I left my tea in the kitchen, but I'll go back for it. Is that one of a kind? Yeah, it's just custom made by a fan. Hmm. Painkiller cam. That's uh, incredible. It is incredible. I love it. I'm too scared to wear it. I wore it on stage once. Okay, Lizzo, floral or color block? Mm, don't look in my closet because I have a lot of floral. I want to say color block because I want to be edgy. You definitely do have a lot of floral in here. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. <laughs> um, okay, two questions left. You said that music is a form of activism. Do you think the same could be said for fashion? Absolutely. Mm. Um, I think that I was politicized because of the things that I wore. Um, being a big black woman wearing what I wore on stage was instantly political and it made a statement. And I'm grateful for that. It was annoying at first, but I'm so grateful to be a part of moving the conversation mm. in fashion forward for like bigger bodies and black women. Okay, and finally, question <laughs> number 73. What did you think of Bill Nye's dance moves to Juice at New York Fashion Week? Inertia is a property of matter. Lissop's coming in with the deep thoughts on science and physics. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Lizzo. <laughs>